Cher and Sonny, the dynamic couple, brought a lot of love, laughter, and light to mainstream media during the late 1960s and 70s. Smiling on the outside, the famed duo's connection was even deeper, more complex and more fraught than their public image suggested. I think that the fact that we're standing on this stage together, side by side, yeah. proves one important thing. What's that? There's still one thing that we can do together. Not only was Cher just 16 when they met, but their marriage was riddled with personal and professional betrayal. Sonny Bono had already been working in the music industry for a few years when he met Cher in the early 60s. The young songstress was just 16 years old in comparison to the 27-year-old Bono, who was already married but separated from his wife. During a 2018 Sirius XM special titled The Cher Show, making the musical, the singer revealed that she felt an instant connection with Bono. She shared that everyone just disappeared when she first saw him, noting that he was the most unusual person I'd ever seen. Though Cher was immediately infatuated with Sonny, he was actually interested in one of her friends. I was with my girlfriend, who was really beautiful, Cher recalls. He liked her, so he didn't really say anything to me. He was like, oh yeah, kid. Even though they weren't romantically involved, Cher was soon living with Sonny. Yeah, but so we were like pals. Actually, I was like an annoyance to him. Not really an annoyance, but I, you know, all the girls that lived in the building next to us, like they were all very, you know, mm, like that, and I was very, mm. He'd moved into a nearby apartment when her roommates kicked her out and said she could stay with him if she'd clean the place. Reluctant to return home, Cher agreed to do so, though she never actually tackled household chores. He also let her know up front he didn't exactly have heart eyes for her. He said, okay, I have twin beds, you can stay in my house. I don't find you particularly attractive, said Sonny. Yet in time, their relationship shifted from platonic to romantic. Cher, who'd been abandoned by her father, said, it wasn't a fiery, sexy thing with us, but rather paternal, like we were bound together, two people who needed each other, almost for protection. Cher's mother also felt her daughter's father issues played a role in the relationship. It's strange, she told Ladies Home Journal in 1975, but at that time, Sonny was the spinning image of her father. I think the father image had a great deal to do with Cher's feelings, but I didn't think it would have helped if I'd told that to Cher. When a girl is as much in love with a man as she was, not much can be done about it. Soon enough, Sonny and Cher began working on their musical careers. Thanks to his work for Phil Spector, Cher got gigs as a backup singer on Spector-produced hits like You've Lost That Love and Feeling and Be My Baby. Sonny felt Cher could succeed as a singer on her own, but due to her nerves, he started performing with her to make her more comfortable. And after a few detours, including time as a duo called Caesar and Cleo, the pair became stars with I Got You Babe. Sonny had written the song and he continued to oversee their career as they produced other hits, including 1967's The Beat Goes On. Cher told Billboard in 2017, I knew what I wanted to do, but I never would have gotten there without Sonny. Cher and Sonny's personal relationship had continued as they sought and found stardom. They had a faux marriage ceremony in 1964. They would officially tie the knot in 1969. As in their career, Cher was happy to let Sonny take the lead in their personal lives. Looking back in 2010, she said, I had such a hero worship of Sonny, long after we were together. I just thought he was great. By the end of the 60s, Cher and Sonny's music career had stalled out as public tastes shifted, and Sonny's decision to self-finance Chastity, a movie starring Cher, left them broke after the film flopped. In 1969, the couple had a child, Chastity Bono, who later transitioned to male and became known as Chaz Bono. But this relationship milestone made it all the more important to jumpstart their career. Something that was, you know, specific, not just to my music, but just to my, you know, touched my heart. Cher and Sonny started a lounge act, during which their onstage banter evolved into Cher delivering perfectly deadpan put-downs to and about her husband. They became popular enough to land a TV show in 1971, the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour. It was a huge hit, with their family relationship a centerpiece of the series. Underlining this closeness was Cher and Sonny singing I Got You Babe to each other at the end of each episode. Also, it didn't hurt that soon-to-be comedic star Steve Martin wrote some of the material. Though their careers had been reborn, their personal life was in trouble. As Vanity Fair put it, Sonny had married a teenager, but soon she became a woman and a mother. 
Cher also became a superstar, often shining so brightly that Sonny got lost in the background. You are a butterfly, meant to be seen by all, not to be kept by one, he admitted even as he controlled Cher's decisions. Despite showcasing an ideal relationship on screen, Cher and Sonny's dynamic behind the scenes had begun to crumble. At the height of their stardom, Sonny and Cher's marriage became rife with infidelity. It all began in 1972 when the relationship started going downhill. Sonny wasn't faithful to Cher, who once remarked, One woman, or even five, was not enough for him. I asked him, how did you manage the logistics? I was trusting and faithful with him. I'm not sure if we should have ever been husband and wife. Soon, both were having affairs. Sonny was seeing a woman named Connie Foreman, and Cher was seeing several lovers, but would begin seeing label executive David Geffen. He was such a wonderful boyfriend. We had, we had such a great time together. As their careers were tied up with the idea of Sonny and Cher as a couple, it was hard to divorce. Instead, they stayed married, but found new partners, with some joining the couple at their mansion. In a diary entry from August 21st, 1973, Sonny wrote, Connie and I live together as husband and wife. But my public wife is still Cher in order to maintain all the things I want right now. That's the way it has to be. This didn't seem to phase Cher, who has said, We had a weird relationship. I don't expect anybody to understand it. Yet, the marriage facade couldn't last forever. Sonny filed for separation in February 1974. Then Cher demanded a divorce, calling their marriage involuntary servitude. In the process of breaking up, Cher had discovered that Cher Enterprises, the corporation formed by Sonny, was 95% owned by her husband, with the remaining 5% held by their lawyer. Despite being known as a pair, only one half fully profited from Sonny and Cher. Trusting her hubby, Cher had also signed a restrictive contract that meant she couldn't take jobs without Sonny. Now, she wanted out of this agreement. Indeed, Cher was tired of being controlled by Sonny. It wasn't like, I mean, he never hit me, never really yelled at me, she explained. I could just never ever talk back to him, and so I never got any of my needs met. As a result, their show was cancelled, and their split was now in the public eye. It would be Cher's new Bo Geffen, who actually helped get her out of the limiting contract imposed by Sonny. He apparently likened her contract to slave labor. In divorce proceedings, the singer notably said her soon-to-be ex-husband relegated her to involuntary servitude. Sonny detested that accusation and talked about it in his autobiography, and the beat goes on, according to the Washington Post. In the end, the two came to a deal for Cher to participate in more than a million dollars worth of shows and appearances, with Sonny to leave her contract. When the divorce was finalized, they were ordered to split their earnings and properties equally. Sonny was also told to pay for all of Cher's legal fees, in addition to paying her $25,000 a month for half a year, and pay child support. After separate TV shows failed for both Cher and Sonny, they worked together on the Sonny and Cher show again. But the magic was gone and the show didn't last. Cher struggled to find her footing after divorcing Sonny. She said in a 2017 interview that he had made every decision for her. I knew how to sing and how to be a mother. I didn't know anything else. But she remained a star and added an impressive career in acting to her resume. Sonny decided to become a restaurateur before turning to politics. At times, both seemed to regret their breakup. I enjoyed the power of Sonny and Cher so much. That took years and years to let go, he revealed to People magazine in 1991. In 2010, Cher confided to Vanity Fair that she'd felt Sonny was treating me more like the golden goose than like his wife. She also said that if he had agreed to just disband Cher Enterprises and start all over again, she would have never ever laughed. Just split it down the middle, 50-50. Despite sharing a child, Cher and Sonny often sniped at each other in public after splitting up. If asked about the time she'd been happiest, Cher would often say, When I left Sonny. Sonny felt Cher played the part of a victim. Yet they reunited for an emotional rendition of I Got You Babe on Late Night with David Letterman in 1987. And Cher once clarified, Even if we don't say nice things about each other, it doesn't mean anything. I know Sonny too well. Cher was devastated and in shock when she learned Sonny had died in a skiing accident. She spent days drafting a eulogy she hoped would repair all the damage and misconceptions about Sonny. At his funeral, her moving words touched on their history and connection. She ended by saying, I was young. There was this section in the Reader's Digest 
and it was called the most unforgettable character I've ever met. <laughs> and for me, that person is Sonny Bono. No matter how old I get, no matter how many people I meet, that person will always be Sun for me. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for choosing Rumor Juice. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell for more celebrity stories. And we'll be right back. Be well and be kind.